Hello. On this day, more than 70 years ago, Allied troops stormed the shores of France during World War II. We can never forget the heroism and bravery of those 160,000 troops and commanders who fought their way onto the beaches of Normandy. But today, we're also celebrating the innovators behind that invasion, and one fiery Nebraskan boat builder in particular, Andrew Jackson Higgins. Andrew Higgins started making boats when he was 12 years old. He built his first model, an ice boat on runners, in his mom's basement in Omaha. The boat was great, but the exit plan was non-existent. He ended up cutting a hole in the wall to get it out. Decades later, that same curiosity and innovation led Andrew Higgins to build a boat that changed the war and the world. If you aren't a military historian or an engineering buff, you might not know about the Higgins boats. But during World War II, the Allies needed to break through the German line guarding the French coastline. We didn't have airlift capabilities that could make this possible, so we looked for boats. Military commanders needed a craft flat enough to reach shore, big enough to carry tanks and troops, and agile enough to protect servicemen as they disembarked. Andrew Higgins had been making boats for the Louisiana Bayou. He converted the front of his half wood, half steel, small boat into a ramp that allowed our boys to run straight off. The boats were perfect for amphibious landings. On June 6th, Higgins' boats ferried soldiers of the 1st Infantry Division to Omaha Beach, the most heavily fortified landing zone in Normandy. Eisenhower was endlessly impressed. He said, if Higgins had not designed and built those boats, we never could have landed over an open beach, Eisenhower said. The whole strategy of the war would have been different, close quote. Andrew Higgins helped us take vital ground on D-Day, but he didn't stop there. Over the course of the war, Higgins' company built more than 23,000 boats. His drop bow design crafts were used in every major invasion of the war, from Normandy to Iwo Jima to North Africa. Our enemies hated him. Adolf Hitler complained that he was the new Noah. For us and our allies, though, Higgins was a hero. General Eisenhower raved, Andrew Higgins is the man who won the war for us. What's amazing about this story is it almost didn't happen. Leading up to the war, Higgins Lumber Company was close to bankruptcy. Competing manufacturers and techniques threatened to put him out of business. Instead of closing down his shop, though, Higgins innovated. He went into boat design and creation, and he invested in lumber. In 1939, he bought the entire crop of mahogany from the Philippines. People thought the guy was crazy. When crises strike, it's people like Andrew Higgins, people who are used to setbacks and unafraid to take risks. It's these kinds of people who step up to serve their country. My good friend and colleague, Congressman Jeff Fortenberry, has championed Higgins' legacy and told his story for years. Fortenberry helped dedicate a monument honoring Andrew Higgins and the soldiers of D-Day in France a few years ago. Today, we join Jeff Fortenberry in remembering and celebrating those men who landed on the beaches of Normandy in 1944. We're also proud of the man, the Nebraskan, whose ingenuity, perseverance, and creativity made that landing possible. Thank you, Andrew Higgins.